Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. Today we're going to do a little discussion about file extensions as well as what we commonly refer to in the industry as dumb solids. So whenever you're using a CAD software like SolidWorks or Inventor or Fusion 360, you're going to be using a method which is called parametric modeling. And that's going to be the collection of sketches and features uh, to make a solid part or watertight part. And I can go in here inside of like SolidWorks and I'm used to seeing this feature tree. I can open up the sketch. I can edit the sketch after it's been completed. I can make a change and the part will update accordingly. So when you have that flexibility to make those changes, that's going to be parametric modeling. But if I have a part that I'm working on in SolidWorks and my supplier or the person that's going to be manufacturing this is working in, let's say, Inventor. Well, if I save this out as a native SOLIDWORKS part file, SLD PRT, and I send that to them as an email, and they try opening it inside of Inventor, well, they're gonna have some kind of compatibility issue. You can't open up those native CAD files in another software. And the way that we can get around that is by using what I referred to earlier as dumb solids. And there's a whole list of dumb solids that we can use uh, that are very specific to maybe the kernel that the software is using, or maybe just trying to use a blanket, you know, cover here and maybe use like what we call like a step file uh, that can be opened in any software really. So if I go to file, save as in one of my parts here, and I'm trying to send this as an email, I'm going to start off with the least compatible uh, 3D dumb solid, and I'm going to go to the most compatible 3D dumb solid. So that being said, when I go to file, save as, uh, you're going to see down here I have my save as file type. If I click the drop down menu, I have a whole list of different file extensions that I can choose to save into. Uh, this might be a little bit overwhelming at first, but I'm going to start again with the most basic, and that's going to be an STL. So those of you who are in 3D printing, you might use STL or OBJ files. And these are really com uh, convenient because they can segment um, a part into a bunch of little triangles that can be processed a little bit easier in those formats. So STL stands for stereolithographic, uh, and I often call it a standard triangle language as well. So if I hit save, you'll see that I have 938 triangles that are attached to this one part. And when I hit the yes, it's going to compress all these different triangles into a solid part. So I'm going to hit yes. This might take a second. I'm going to open up my file explorer. I might have to refresh it. Yep, and there it is. Oops, clicked off of it, and there it is. So I'm going to briefly minimize my original SOLIDWORKS part here. And I'm going to see my SOLIDWORKS home screen. So then I'm going to open up my file uh, explorer here, and I'm going to look at the STL file. And whenever I'm using any one of these dumb solids, I think it's a lot easier just to drag, click, hold, and drop, then going and file open, and then finding the original file location. So that's the method that I'm going to be using from here on out. So I'm going to click and, uh, click and hold on this STL file, and I'm going to drag and drop it out here into the home screen. And you'll notice that this might look a little different in a couple of ways. Uh, first and foremost, we see in the feature tree, I have a graphic rather than the collection of sketches and bosses and extrudes and cuts. So I can't actually go in here and make changes to the part itself. I would have to either use this as reference and draw a whole new part or try to get around it by drawing over it. So I want you to pay attention when I turn on these lines that I have these nice circles that are now segmented into a couple different areas. And I can change the, uh, the resolution on this to be a, a little bit more fine. So if you guys are working inside of a 3D printer uh, and a slicer like that, you can actually control this from the software. Uh, but right now, I'm just going to use this as an example that when I want a nice smooth radius and I'm programming to this, well, I'd have to program this line to line to line instead of one whole arc. So this isn't very helpful when we're in a CAM software. So when we're in the CAD software, 
a majority of the time we're going straight into that CAMP software right afterwards because we want to make the part. Well, this STL file format really isn't going to help me all that much. So aside from 3D printing, I'm going to kind of call this a wash and I'm just going to close this file out for right now. So I'm going to close the STL file. I'm not going to save it. And I'm going to go back to my native SOLIDWORKS part. So I'm back here. I can see my feature tree. And I'm going to save this out as the next more compatible part, which is going to be referred to as an IGES file. And the IGES file is kind of a funny one because it was the first true native 3D file that could be exchanged. Well, the problem with it is it's gotten the nickname over the years as I guess. So I just file, I guess file, because you really never know what you're going to get. So I'm going to file save as, and I'm going to change my file extension to IGS. So right here, IGS. So when I save this, it'll do the same thing. It's going to compress this down, but what's going to be different from the STL file is I'm going to minimize this window so I get the home screen again. If I click and hold on this IGES file and I drag it out, well, we're going to be prompted with this new window here, which says, do you want to run an import diagnostics? Whenever you see this open inside SOLIDWORKS, you want to hit yes. And the reason being is because it's trying to take the collection of surfaces and it's trying to make a watertight or solid model. So I'm going to hit yes here. But the problem with this, even though it looks a lot better, you know, instead of, I don't know, 25 different lines in there, I only have three. And that whole arc there is one solid arc. It's tangent to tangent. But the problem here is you see on the left hand side, my faulty faces. I have 17 faulty faces in this one part alone. And when I click on one of these faulty faces, you'll notice that it's connecting to all these edges or it's just one whole face. So for example, this one right here, I'm not seeing that it's connecting to the perpendicular faces here, which means that I probably won't be able to select on the loop inside of a, a software like Mastercam. So even though this looks a lot better, I'm not going to be able to use this in a CAM software. If I was, I would have to do some more uh, detailed compressing on that end. So like projecting all the curves to a new surface, which isn't a problem, but it's going to be difficult uh, coming from an IGES file, especially if you have a lot of complex geometry. So again, when we're talking about, you know, moving into that CAD to CAM pipeline, I probably want to avoid the IGES file as well. Only when it's necessary or there are no other options is when you want to use that IGES file. So again, it's nice. It looks a lot better than the STL file, but I'm going to call it a wash on this one as well. So we're going to close out of this one. Don't save. And then I'm going to go start moving into the more native uh, file types here. So file, save as. And I'm going to talk about two in specific. And that's going to be the SAT file, which is going to be native to your uh, inventor. So that's right here, ACIS, SAT file, right there. And when I save out into that, I'm still going to be able to import this into SOLIDWORKS, um, but it's going to have a little bit more flexibility when it's being imported into uh, inventor because the native kernel inside of like inventor is that SAT file. So you might have a little bit better of a time trying to process it there. But let's see, I'm going to click on the SAP file and I'm going to drag and drop it into the SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to see the import diagnostics again. Yes, a lot better with the faulty faces. So there's no faulty faces now. But I don't get an option for uh, the continuing import diagnostics, which I'm probably going to see that on the step file as well. But uh, that's just because it's not the native kernel. So this is still really good. I have the ability now to start drawing on this and then using it as solid geometry. I can cut into it. I can make changes. But again, it's not that parametric model uh, reference where I can actually go in and delete and edit and change and revise geometry. So this is the SAT file the native kernel to inventor. I'm going to now use a 
uh, step file. So I'm inside the native SOLIDWORKS part again. File, save as, and I'm going to go to step. So there are two step files. Um, they're mostly going to be relayed to either assemblies or uh, if you want to include materials. Uh, the 214 is going to have more of that uh, information, whereas the 203 is going to be a little bit more basic. Um, so I'm going to click on step uh, AP 214, and then I'm going to hit save. So step files are going to be probably the most recognized 3D file exchange because it's ISO controlled. And it's just monitored with all software that you can actually export it from SOLIDWORKS and then directly import it into like an Inventor or a Fusion or, or Creo um, or Pro-E. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this again. And I'm going to find this, oops, I might have to refresh this window, step file. So you'll notice that the icon has now changed. So I have the pieces of paper for the IGIS, the step, or sorry, the IGIS, the SAT, and then the SDL. But now I have the SOLIDWORKS application. This is now like a, a natively recognized SOLIDWORKS application. So I get the icon for it, but I don't get the preview like I do for the original file type. So if I click and hold on this and I drag it out into the window, the home screen, I still get this import diagnostics. And then I hit the green check mark. And much like the SAT file, nothing's really changed, but uh, if it was more complex geometry, uh, I might have a better time using the step file over the SAT file. Um, so if I'm going to download something off of like McMaster car, or maybe I'm downloading something directly from the manufacturer. So I have a bunch of tool holders, uh, risers and uh, vices that I might download from Shunk. Well, I'm probably going to get those in a native or not a native. I'm going to be getting them in a step file format. Um, unless I can get a native SOLIDWORKS file. But I don't know what uh, CAD platforms that they're using, so there's not a good chance that I might receive those, except maybe McMaster card, because they draw everything in every single CAD platform. So step files, pretty good. Probably your first go-to when you're transferring from one software to the next. Now, if you know that you're going into SOLIDWORKS, just like if you know you're going into Inventor, I'm going to use that SAT file. If I know I'm going into SOLIDWORKS, or if I know I'm going to go into NX, I'm going to what's uh, I'm going to export um, into what's called a Parasolid file format. So that's going to be the XB file extension. So if I go to File, Save As in my native SOLIDWORKS part, I can see my feature tree. I'm going to click the drop-down menu, and I'm going to go down to Parasolid. So that's going to be the XT XB. Uh, file format or the file extension. So I'm going to click on Parasolid and I'm going to hit save. And what's convenient about this uh, Parasolid file format is when I minimize my window and I go back to my home screen here, just like what we saw with the step file, I'm also going to see that SOLIDWORKS application native icon. So I'm going to go to properties and make sure that this is my Parasolid, I see the XT extension. Well, if I click hold and I drag it out, just like how I saw with the SAT file and just like how I saw with the step file, I'm going to get my import diagnostics. I'm going to hit yes. Didn't see any faulty faces. We're good to go. Hit the green check mark. But now I get the feature works recognition. And what's convenient about the feature works recognition is that even though this file might have been drawn on a previous version of SOLIDWORKS, or maybe it's been drawn in uh, Inventor, or maybe it was drawn in uh, NX. Well, if I hit the yes, it's going to go through and try to redraw this into a native SOLIDWORKS feature tree parametric model uh, flow and method. So I would nine times out of 10 hit no on this just because it's going to lock up your computer pretty good especially if you have more complex geometry. But I just want to show you an example of how this looks on a simple part. So this is just that 98431 part that we've been using with a couple of our different exercises. So if I hit yes on the feature recognition here, you'll notice that I get this new window. It says, hey, I'm going to turn on my lines here so you can see this a little bit better. Also, something to note with the uh, Parasolid file, you see how I have no separations in these holes? So I can get the entire diameter when I measure these as opposed to like the step file and the sat file where 
even though that they were close and they're good, they were split up and they had some separating and parting lines in some of these holes. So that's just something I wanted to point out. But back to the feature recognition, um, I have these uh, options that I can include that it's recognizing to draw from. So I can leave this just standard if you wanted to. You can include drafts, so on and so forth. But I'm going to hit the green check mark here. And what's going to happen is, you know, look, mom, no hands. I'm going to see this drawn in such a way that it will actually try to recognize the geometry and how it was drawn originally. So I have the boss extrude. I have another boss extrude there. I actually did a pretty good job. Cut right there. This was a slot feature before. And then I have my holes and then my fillets here. So drawn a little bit differently than how I originally did it. For example, this boss extrude right here. I had a radius broken here and a radius broken here. Um, but it actually split that up and it added the radius here at the end and the radius here there. But one thing you probably noticed when I opened up that sketch is that there are no dimensions. So there's still no true way to get all these dimensions in here um, unless you're doing it by hand and you're dimensioning it by yourself. But if you have a simple piece of geometry like this, you can probably take advantage of that feature recognition tool and have it be redrawn inside SOLIDWORKS. So when I imported this originally, I'll do it one more time. Minimize it. So I have my uh, Parasol file. See here on the left-hand side, just an imported one reference point. Yes, I'm gonna do my import diagnostics. Still imported one, nothing changed, and I'll do a feature recognition. All this is good, green check mark kind of reading the file and then processing it and then it turned that one solid into all of these different features. So very helpful if I want to make some quick changes and have a little bit more flexibility with this part or maybe I don't know the size of this hole um, and the, you know the tap of it so it'll give you some of that information as well. But really powerful stuff especially when you start moving into like more of those more advanced pieces of geometry and you have to kind of work in between different softwares. Um, it's very helpful to understand these different file extension types and I hope that they help you in the future as you start going from one software to another. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna end on that note and I'll catch you guys on the next one.